Hello, hello. Uh, nice to meet you again in my new avatar form. Uh, as you can see, I turned into a talking uh, screen and you're watching me on another screen. So it's a cardboard uh, screen within a screen cyber experience. Uh, I'm a robot. I can move left, right. I can move uh, forwards, backwards. Uh, I can operate this robotic arm. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, and all of this thanks to this telepresence robot. But this video is not about the robot itself. We are gonna talk about the app that makes this possible, the telepresence app. Telepresence is a concept in robotics that allows you to be remotely present in some distance spaces. It covers the video and audio transmission so we can see and talk with people present somewhere else. And usually there is some kind of a robotic platform involved to freely move around. And what fun we can do with it? Well, you can drive a robot in a remote space. You have view from its camera so you can see its surroundings and talk to people there. And it is probably a lot of fun, but I am alone here in my workshop, so I won't show you that. But the other type of activity I like with telepresence is to organize some kind of a mission for your robot where you operate it only with camera vision and have to solve some tasks and challenges. Something like operating a rover on Mars, but the rover is in the other room and there is no 20 minutes of communication lag. So driving it is much easier. And if the robot has any kind of a manipulation arm, we can play with some collecting object activities. Of course, it gets even more playful when there are more teleoperated robots involved. My attempt with this app is to make the telepresence experience as simple and accessible as possible, so the only hardware you need for it is a smartphone and some kind of robot that will be capable of holding the phone on its top. The app is compatible with BBC Microbit and Kali Open Mini, so you can connect to any robot you build with these boards. I designed a dedicated cardboard robotic car for telepresence, but you can use any other robotic rover as long as you manage to strap smartphone to it. How to use the app? It works as a progressive web app in your browser, so open it just like a regular web page in Chrome, Opera, Edge or Bluefy web browser on iOS. You need two devices, a smartphone to install on the robot and a laptop, tablet or any other smartphone to connect remotely and control the telepresence robot. So, open the app on both devices, allow for camera use and once the app is loaded, you will see randomly generated ID in the field on top of the screen. Click the phone call icon and type the ID of the device you want to connect to. If the connection is okay, you should see camera view from the other device. If you double tap on the camera view, you can zoom it to full screen. When it comes to connection, there is one important caveat. The app will work only if both devices are in the same local Wi-Fi network. It will not connect to a phone that is only on mobile data connection due to network security constraints. I was really hoping I could make it work without these network restrictions, but at this point, unfortunately, it is not possible with my app to control the robot over the internet from the other side of the world. I will talk a bit more about these technical aspects and security concerns in the end of this video. Now getting back to using the app. The smartphone that is mounted on the robot connects to the controller board over Bluetooth. So click the robot head icon on this device, find the microbit or Kali Open Mini board and click connect. Of course, you have to upload specific code to the board before so it recognizes the commands from the app. You can find the sample code in the documentation page on Cardboard Robot's website. And the code can be adjusted to any robot design. Once everything is set up properly, we can start playing with our robot. Open the gamepad interface and you can use it with touch or keyboard keys. Arrows works as directions and plus, minus and bracket keys are for sliders control. Gamepad generates simple text comments. You can see their preview in the field on top of the screen. For example, when you press left arrow, uppercase left string is being transmitted over Wi-Fi to the peer you are connected to, and then it is sent forward over Bluetooth to the microcontroller board. When you release the key, similar command but lowercase left is being sent. When you move the slider, 
its value is being sent with the prefix x or c. So to program your robot you just have to interpret these commands with basic if statements and you can control anything you want. In the gamepad interface you can also find camera flip button. It will switch between front and back camera on your peer device. It is quite useful when you operate the robot remotely and you can switch between front and back view. Along with video transmission, audio is being transmitted as well, but the microphone is muted by default. You have to be quite careful with it because it is very prone to feedback loop. What goes out of the speaker gets into the microphone and you will start to hear kind of an echo effect and sometimes loud whistling squeak. This kind of noise cancellation is an obvious thing that we take for granted in any video communication app, but when you try to build this kind of app yourself, it is not that easy to implement. So here you have to take this limitation into account and turn the volume down. And one thing that also helps with it a bit is using external microphone. Okay, I think this is all when it comes to user manual, but since you come this far, maybe you would be interested into more technical aspects of how the app works. I found it quite fascinating when working on the app, and it was a nice occasion to learn more about how computer networks work. For example, you might wonder what about security? Can I see your video or hear you talking through the app? And the answer is of course no. The app operates on a web standard called WebRTC, which stands for Web Real-Time Communication. This protocol is built into web browsers and allows devices to connect and communicate directly with each other, without any server in between handling video and audio. It is called peer-to-peer -peer communication. What my app provides it is so-called signaling service. This is simply a way for two devices to exchange contact details they need, things like network addresses and connection parameters. Your real IP address is never exposed directly. Instead, you just share short ID shown in the app. And once the connection is established, all video, audio and text travels directly between your devices, fully encrypted end-to-end. -end. Nothing is sent through to any external server including mine. However, there is a catch. Direct peer-to-peer -peer connections often aren't allowed across the public internet. They are usually blocked because many networks, mobile operators and schools especially, use firewalls that prevent unknown incoming connections. This is a security measure built into the network itself, not into the browser. This is why the app works reliably when both devices are on the same local network, for example, the same Wi-Fi or hotspot. In that situation, browsers can communicate freely and WebRTC can establish its direct encrypted link. To make such communication work across different networks, for example, from your home to someone on mobile data, I would need to add something called Turn Relay Server to my application. It is a trusted server on the internet that would act as a middleman for your data transmission. One device sends video to the relay server and the other downloads it back from it, so these two devices do not communicate directly and thus are more protected. And it is not that hard to implement, but this kind of relay server services are paid per gigabyte of data transfer. And here we are talking about video transmission. With rough estimation, if the app had 1000 users monthly with average 5 minutes of connection, it would cost about 10 to 50 dollars per month. And it does not seem that much, but it will grow with more usage and could be easily abused. And I want to keep this app free for you and for myself as well. The other disadvantage of using this relay server would be latency added to the data transfer, as the data would have to travel forth and back to a remote server it would add a visible lag of about one second or more. It is not that huge problem for video communication, but it would make controlling the robot movement much harder. So for now, the Telepresence app is designed mainly for educational use, where both devices connect to the same local network, which gives the best speed, no relay costs for me, and very low latency. And even with these restrictions in mind, I hope you will have a lot of fun with this app. Cheers!